What's up, everyone? Welcome to the trade room where we talk macro, fundamentals, and technicals of the overall markets and investing space. More specifically, crypto, GameFi, and the overall crypto market. Today, we do not have our usual stream, but we're going to be digging into Bitcoin after a dip, where that is, what we believe it's happening, and why we think this is the last hurrah and the last major impulse. We talk more specifically about Bitcoin, AVAX, and Jewel, what that order of liquidity is, and where we see those going. So, Without further ado, let's get started. All right. All right, enough of that. Enough of that. Enough of that. Welcome back, folks. Welcome back, folks. If you are here, thank you for showing up. Thank you for all the support that you guys have given to my channel overall. Make sure to put a thumbs up, like, subscribe if you have not yet. So what are we talking about today? We're talking about Bitcoin. We see that there's been an overall side trading and downturn in Bitcoin since hitting our all-time high. We've spoken about the 20 to 30% correction that Bitcoin just needs to have. Uh, normally also, too, when you're later into these massive runs. Um, and we got that. We got about 27%, I believe. Let me not just talk out of my butthole. Let me just grab a ruler here. And let's measure from the top here how low we went. Uh, right here. Okay, so it's about a 23, 24%. So right in the cusp of that. Since then, we've got a lot of side trading. And so, and we've also gotten Bitcoin coming and going as low as 56,000. Most recently, about 58,000. So what does this price action that's happening in Bitcoin, oh, oh, what's going on here? What does that mean for Bitcoin? What does that mean for the rest of the space? And what is in the trade room? What is our inference of what is to come? Well, since these highs, we've had this falling wedge that we can see in this these white trend lines here. And the expectation was that if this is a falling wedge pattern, we are due for a breakout of this falling wedge. And we got that. Now, what are the rules for a falling wedge? Well, if that is the pattern that we are seeing, the rules for a falling wedge dictate that you get some side trading, some downwards trading, and you eventually get a breakout of that falling wedge to confirm a close above resistance, right? And then you do uh, get a back test, right? By a retest of the former resistance acting as what? New support, right? So that are that's the rules for a falling wedge. And if you're tr we're tracking things, you know, time is hard to gauge. But from tracking this falling wedge, we got this breakout, right? And we got a dip back to about 66,000. And I'm sitting there and I'm very surprised that we're not following the rules to this fallen wedge and lo and behold after a second run back up to about 71 72 000 we eventually got that drop right um and let's measure the percentage of this drop here percentage of this drop was about 18 percent in about 22 days and so uh the sentiment in the overall market is not high and it is not bullish obviously because prices are going down uh did we make our way to the uh top right of this falling wedge no 
And that is because 58,000 has proven or 58, 59,000 has proven to be a very strong support area for Bitcoin. We see it the first time here at 59. We see it the second time, third time, and now the fourth time. All throughout that period, RSI has been slowly trending down. RSI relative index is a measure of buying or selling in the market. And if RSI is high, that means that things are oversold. There's too much buying happening. Um, there's too much euphoria happening. And most likely prices are to come down. And we've seen RSI trickling down. So why do we believe that 58 is a stronghold? In the Jewelers uh, Guild, which you can find us on Discord, which who also comes on uh, uh, 9.30 p.m. Eastern time. This is going to premiere at 7.30 p.m. Eastern. You'll be able to catch the jewelers right after this. But 58 is a strong support area. We believe that 60K is going to hold based upon the con con um, continuous uh, bounces here, based upon the falling wedge rules, based upon the fact that the market sentiment is really bearish at this current moment or just not positive, right? Um, based upon the fact that the RSI also on the weekly candle is cooling off here. So one, we've had surprise liquidations, right? Those who may have thought that this was the low, this was the low, may have taken leverage longs, right? Leverage longs on the market. And I, I'm not a fan of leverage, especially if you don't know what you're doing. But you see a lot of liquidations in these one, two, three straight weeks of an 18% move. So now you have less longs, right? People who are predicting for Bitcoin to go up, that's um, open interest is now low, right? If you have high open interest, it's normally a bearish indicator, right? Then you have, this is a similar pattern to what we had at 25,000 for Bitcoin. And let me show you what I mean by that. Over at 25,000, and we were tracking this in the trade room, we were getting positive price action here. And guys, this is not my usual setup. So if my lighting is a little bit weird or um, my the vocals are coming off a little bit weird or if my if, it, if I freeze every so often, my apologies. I'm literally just using my laptop here, not my normal setting. So, you know, from the 15K, we had this large impulse here from Bitcoin, right? And market sentiment was terrible down here. We had a big run of about 110%, right? And in that time, people finally started to get positive and say, oh my gosh, things are looking good. What's going on? This is Bitcoin is back. And then we got a, a, a what at that time was a major correction um, from this impulse here that brought us down to as low as 23%. Remember, those 20 to 30% corrections that happened really shake up the sentiments of the market. But we had this 25K area here as support at that period in time. We wanted to see a strong bounce from that area. And the reason why we were looking for that, because if you're looking at the monthly chart, which every candle is a month, when you look at this uh, blue line here, which is a, a part of the Bollinger Band, a Bollinger Band is a indicator, um, which is a simple moving average that kind of shows where the average flow of a particular um, stock or crypto is going to. There was a downtrend, an overall downtrend in the mid Bollinger on the monthly chart with each candle. And we saw this downwards action happening, but we saw it start to flatline here even with this correction. And we said, oh my goodness, if on the monthly chart for Bitcoin, this mid Bollinger can find support here and start to turn around, we are due for some massive price action. And lo and behold, once we stabilized in the mid Bollinger and started to curve up, 
we got another what? From this support area, we got another 184% run from Bitcoin. Now, this mid Bollinger has been trickling, 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 trickling into this Bitcoin, this F around and find out zone for Bitcoin, which is a highly contested area, which is also the bull market support area, right? So even if 60K here were not to hold for Bitcoin, I would we would get a little bit nervous, but this $46,000 area is the bull market support area for Bitcoin, that would still keep me bullish looking for that to be a support area. But the price action of Bitcoin has been so strong that it has not returned there. So I hope that gives you insight to what we are thinking here. The surprise liquidations, not a lot of open interest. The uh, mid Bullinger on the monthly finding support here in the macro sense and bouncing here. Um, and then when you look at, let's go to a smaller time frame, we have what we call bullish divergence. And if you guys have been following me, me for any period of time, you guys know how I feel about bullish divergence. It's a pattern that I like to track and like to watch. So we have a daily bullish divergence where we had price going down in this time frame but rsi going up that is a bullish signal of a possible reverse or impulse that's in a daily chart where each candle is a day when you go to the four hour chart even more impressive right you have a four hour bullish divergence and an even longer time frame this is, let me just exit out of here. This is June, right? June 11th of 2024, all right? All the way down to the current areas of June 25th. So about mm -hmm. a two-week period. We have price going down, but you had RSI creating higher highs, meaning that the market is eating up and buying up these dips. So that eventually leads, bullish divergence eventually leads to an impulse. Now you see the Bitcoin price action impulse from this low of 58, where it tried to respect and ignite that bullish divergence only to find resistance here at that $63,000 area. So what does this mean? This means that there just is some consolidation that's happening here. If this bullish divergence continues to play out, then what we could be seeing is what? This ascending triangle where Bitcoin is just trying to work its way through this resistance area. Uh, 63,000 is that resistance area. Let me drill this a little better. Where Bitcoin is trying to work its way through here. And we could see it do it where even you get a rejection here, right? If this triangle continues, and it may very well uh, try to make its way out of here after being rejected from 63K while it makes its way there. But pretty confident, right? Not only in the macro patterns that we're looking at, but also in these micro patterns that we're looking at okay remember falling wedge that's been happening since all-time high liquidations that have happened since this downturn here in june bullish divergence that we have here on a bitcoin price and once we are able to break through 63k the sky is the limit for this run, not only to all time highs, but to ninety two thousand dollars. And so that's what we're expecting. Once we make our way out of this congested consolidation area is a run to ninety two K. The last thing that I'll add about Bitcoin is as we start getting more and more impulsive in the bull market, you have the corrective periods that uh, Bitcoin sits in the consolidation periods that Bitcoin sits in, it, they, they don't last as long. And what do I mean by that? Well, since the last bull market uh, of 2020 to 2021, you have this corrective period that lasts for 
and let's find the, the top here. This corrective period here lasted for about 581 days, right? Close to about two years. And then we got the impulse. We got the impulse from here. OK, once we got the impulse from here that ran from about 15K to about 32K, you had this other corrective period that lasted for how long? Well, let's measure it. This corrective period lasted for 189 days. Then you had another massive impulse. And so we now have this corrective period here. Right. We went from 500 and something days to 189 days. And if we're in a bull market, which we believe that we're in, how long has this corrective period lasted since the top here? So far, this corrective period is 105 days, right? About three months and change. And so um, I don't, we don't expect this corrective period to last more than the 180 days from this period here. Um, and really what this, this could last about another week at max two. Again, this is not financial advice. This is just my journal. And so to wrap up this Bitcoin analysis, what we have here is this bullish divergence and this ascending triangle um, that we're looking to play out here. And we're looking for a breakout of this possibly sometime in July. Normally, with markets, market sentiment, right? Because we talk about technical and also fundamental. Normally, especially in America, the United States, 4th of July, um, sentiment is higher, uh, positivity is higher. And so leading past that 4th of July phase, that could lead us to this impulse. And what we're seeing here on the Bitcoin chart, as we dip into the four hour zone here, as we go into the 4th of July, is this ending of this consolidation and a breakout? All in all, if we're talking, you know, um, macro sense for Bitcoin, uh, this move to 92K is, let's measure it. This move to 92K from here is about a 51% move, which is major. Um, and this 92K and above is danger zone. OK, now from where we stand, we believe that the bull market ends this year, not financial advice. We're looking to take profit between um, August, September ish of this year. And to, even if we have late runners into December, January of 2025, and we have maintained that and we will stick to that. So that is our inference of Bitcoin. Uh, some impulsiveness coming up. You guys heard me play the pump it up, pump it up. I'm excited. I'm waiting for that. We've seen the stock market continue to reach all time highs, all time highs, all time highs between S&P 500 and NVIDIA. And we're expecting the same all time highs and beyond for Bitcoin as well. And if things get really crazy, ultimate upside is $216,000 for Bitcoin. I honestly don't expect that from Bitcoin. I'm looking at somewhere between um, 100 and 120,000 and 140,000. But if we get that hyper overextension, I'm not looking at buying that region, not financial advice. This is a dangerous region to then feel like you have some conviction in the market. So that's what we have for Bitcoin. We're looking for performance to start running. And what does this now mean for all coins as we move to AVAX? Well, what this means for all coins, in our opinion, in my opinion, is that all coins, before Bitcoin makes this major impulse, right, this one to two weeks that last, all coins have a little bit of room to absolutely take off. And one of the altcoins that we're going to be looking at today is AVAX, right? We've been tracking AVAX since this um, descending triangle here from the previous bull market, okay? From the highs of around $140, $150, this descending triangle what lasted about two years, very similar to Bitcoin because Bitcoin moves all markets. And since this even is eight dollar region, we had a massive impulse that took us up about what about 600, 700 percent. 
all in all, we need we wanted ABAX to break out of this thirteen dollar region to give us some confidence, and we saw that it broke through there. We saw that it made a pit stop at twenty one dollars, twenty one thirty five, and that is the bull market support area. That is AVAX's f around and find out zone because there's a lot of uh, convolution, a lot of traffic in this area, and that is the bull market support area. So even though we ran with AVAX up to as high as $65, we um, would not be surprised if it came back down near to test that bull market support area. It can go as low as it wants to from those highs, but as long as it doesn't break that aura, comes down near and finds some support, we won't mind at all. So within this pattern, he projected this rise to about $49 if it was strong. But all in all, we expected a downturn. We got that downturn to as low as $23. And so now we are seeing AVAX making some positive price action, right? And so we have officially now turned bullish on AVAX, even though it hasn't come down to that $21 bull market support area we are feeling very bullish on abax if you see this weekly candle here this weekly candle if it finishes the week let's say the week finishes sunday engulfing this previous bearish candle right which if it finishes the week today is saturday if it somehow impulses and finishes the week at 30 dollars, even more bullish right closes the sunday candle um, even more bullish. But even if it doesn't, we do like what we are seeing here currently from AVAX. If we believe that before Bitcoin makes this uh, massive impulse, that altcoins, especially layer ones, have an opportunity to gain some bullish price action, then that's what we're looking for from AVAX. We, uh, AVAX could easily make its way to that $30, $31. Uh, because there is traffic in that area, it could possibly find some resistance in that area. But it's an area of um, interest um, and an area of a possible rejection. But would not be surprised to see AVAX make this move. We have been tracking bullish divergence for AVAX, right? Even as the price was going down, and it's been doing this, you know, since um, June, right? Start of June. Price took that massive dip and it's been doing that. So price has been going down, but RSI has been going up. You guys know how much I love bullish divergence. And as this bullish divergence played out, we've gotten this major impulse. So not only is there bullish divergence on the four hour, very similar to Bitcoin, there's bullish divergence on the day, right? Where we see RSI going up, but price coming down. And so uh, this was our guesstimation of AVAX. I, I would probably adjust this a little bit because of that $31 region. Um, if we can get an impulse there, bullish. If we get a rejection from there, not bearish. There's some resistance there, and we're going to work to find our way out of this zone. Now, um, if while Bitcoin is going down, all coins have an opportunity to make a bit of a run. What are we looking at in a macro sense for AVAX? Well, truth be told, you have this mid Bullinger on the monthly has now trickled its way above the bull market support area of $21. That's even more bullish to see. And in the long run, we do project that AVAX could make its way to $224. We've been tracking overall from the lows here of this uh, $8 region, a 2,500% run from AVAX. We got that first impulse here to, to $64. We had this cooling off period, but we are still highly confident that it completes this 2,500% run here, creating new all-time highs here. Um, and what does that now mean for the ecosystem that is below AVAX, right? Very bullish on AVAX uh, as a layer one uh, that's related to Solana being a layer one. Really bullish on AVAX, really bullish on what they've been doing, really bullish on their subnets and really bullish on their continued development.
But we have Bitcoin impulse coming. We have all coins who are going. Some all coins are going to just start outperforming in that consolidation region of Bitcoin. Now let's dig into the more mi micro caps, right? And what that means for those other assets and what is one of the more trending assets in the avalanche ecosystem that has a subnet that would be jewel okay um which is the token that sits in um that use utilizes a avalanche subnet to have its own blockchain that uses the game token as the gas token and is officially deflationary with the supply of about 120 million um, and a market cap somewhere in the gist of about 18 to 20 million, which is a micro cap. Jewel is an asset that we have been watching. Um, not going to dig too deeply into the macro analysis as I have done in previous cases. If you would like, please go watch some of uh, my other videos. But when it comes to Jewel, I, I'm absolutely bullish on Jewel in these low areas. As Warren Buffett says, we buy when there's bleeding in the streets. We buy when others have given up and they are selling. And that is what I feel about Jewel. Um, Jewel is something that began, or DeFi Kingdoms began in 2021, August, had a major run based upon you know, bull market um, based upon game five kind of taking off in that region. We had a massive downtrend of about 96 percent to this capitulary area of 11 cents that we've been watching for a very long time. A breakout back down. And we've been inferencing this inverse head and shoulders here. And what we've been saying now for weeks. All right. For weeks is uh, if this shoulder can form here. To solidify that this is an inverse head and shoulders, right? We had a, a smaller inverse head and shoulders here, right? And it's hard to draw this with this chart here. We had a smaller inverse head and shoulders here that led to a 700% run of an impulse and a total 1,000% run from the lows. We have another possible major historical inverse head and shoulders here. We've been talking about it for weeks. And if we dig in deeper, has this been holding? Well, we got a dip here to as low as nine cents. But my goodness, when you look at the daily chart and each candle here is a day, Jewel has just been sitting and squatting on this historical market here. It's since the impulse here, right? We had a dip and the market just boom, bought it right back up. Since this impulse here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine days above this historical capitulatory area. And it seems to be consolidating around this area, which is great to see. So similar to Bitcoin, where... You know, we were watching for, um, you know, an impulse to happen. It's the same thing that we're looking at here for Jewel. And I hate that this thing is um, messing with me here. So let me just um, go into a smaller time frame so I can adjust this. All right. We're looking for this consolidation to complete at some point. Right. And we're looking for Jewel. Right. Since this downtrend to create some sort of uh bullish pattern right out of this we already spoke about divergences there is a daily bullish divergence we do have a four hour bullish divergence um and so jewel can consolidate in this area uh, to confirm if we do have bullish divergence going on but all in all let's look at the macro picture for jewel if this is an inverse head and shoulders that's forming we expect a breakout to not only get out of this consolidation area, which for Jewel, it's it, it's it's F around and find out zone. Bitcoin had an F around and find out zone between 36K and 45K. Jewel has this F around and find out zone between 15 cents and 30 cents. 
but we're looking for an impulse from this head and shoulders. And normally from a head and shoulders, you get an impulse to at least the neckline. And the neckline of this head and shoulders sits at um, 29 cents. From there, sometimes you get a back test of that neckline, right? So if we were to get a breakout here, you may get a back test of that neckline before we then take off, right? This is the pattern in blue that you see drawn here. But my goodness, um, this impulse can be very aggressive, very bullish, taking us back to that 74, 80 cent area. And then from there, uh, you can see things start to really escalate when it comes to Jewel, especially if what? Especially if Bitcoin is running and then taking its breaks, especially if AVAX and the uh, altcoins take advantage of this Bitcoin cooling off area between 61 and 63K, that liquidity can then flow into Jewel and we can start seeing these micro caps really take off. And so that's what we're looking at for Jewel. Um, I believe that once we get out of this F run and find out zone between 15 cents and uh, 30 cents, especially with PVP coming and uh, more uh, marketing coming for from um, DeFi kingdoms that in this chart, especially in this three day chart, nothing stopping Jewel from getting not only 274 cents, a dollar 26 cents, uh, but absolutely nothing stopping Jewel from getting to that four dollars to that five dollar fifty eight cent region, and so really excited to be in this space. Really excited to see what Jewel is going to do. And short term wise, we're looking for the weekly close. Right, the, this is the weekly chart, and each candle is one week. We're looking for the weekly chart for June to close above this historical capitulatory area okay if the weekly candle can close above this historically capitulatory area will be even more bullish that's the weekly if we go to the month because june is ending on sunday if this monthly candle for jewel can close above this historical capitulatory area even more bullish. And so far, we see on a Saturday that that is happening. So there is some good probability that Jewel can close the weekly, the daily, and the monthly candle above this historically capitulatory area. And if that's the case, G-O-G, -G, my golly, we are in for some good days in the DeFi Kingdom's realm with the jewel price action and i got asked the question do i believe that jewel makes it back to its all-time highs i'm not sure about that i'm not sure about that because we do have a tight window remaining in my opinion with the rest of the bull market and then close to um the end of q3 beginning of q4 possibly stretches out to december january um but um, I, 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 I'm pessimistic in this way where I believe four to five dollars can happen. I, I, I don't know if I'm a believer that we get back to um, our all time highs at twenty two dollars. But I do believe in a long run macro sense, forty one dollars is very attainable um, for Jewel Very attainable. So um, we're here early. We're here at the lows. We love the development in this ecosystem. And just to encapsulate this in the macro sense, we're bullish. We're bullish. We're waiting for Bitcoin's uh, impulses. Uh, if, if you're just getting into this space or if you've been in this space for long enough, the sentiment is in the dumps. Um, but if you've been here, um, you, you, you kind of see what's happening and you're ready. You're ready for the upside to happen. Is it 100%? No, because nothing is ever for certain. We are all basing our inferences on probability. But for this space that we're in and this time that we are in and the experience that we've had in this space, absolutely negatively bullish, even though others are quiet, even though folks are talking bearish, this is where those who are following data points come into this space 
and show their confidence because you have some coming in talking bearish sentiment, which they have all the right to do so. So, guys, if you stayed here for this long, got to love it. Make sure you put your thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe. Um, make sure you put your alerts on uh, because we will be back um, next week with some more videos. And we're just very excited for coming. Uh, oops. We're very excited for what's coming in this space. And um, leave a comment. What are your thoughts? What are you thinking for the space? Are you bullish? Are you bearish? What do you think about my, my price analysis here? Um, but hey, we're here. All right, guys, have a good night. Make sure to tap into the Jewelers podcast that comes on at 9 30 p.m. Eastern. This has been a short one, but I wanted to give you guys a quick breakdown of um, our thoughts on what's happening in this space. And I'm going to send you guys off with some boosts. Thank you.